your host, Joey and Kevin Tejido. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of the Fin Hub Show, powered by BetUS. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure to check out BetUS and use code YouTube150 for 150% bonus on your first deposit. The next two deposits will be for up to 125% bonuses, and that's for a total of up to $2,000. So use code YouTube150 for that 150% bonus and get started on BetUS today. All right, guys, we have plenty to talk about. The Colts game was pretty bad, and the quarterback play didn't look great. Missed along a lot of throws there by Huntley. Yeah. But we will have Tua Tungle-Vailoa coming back for Week 8 against the Cardinals this Sunday at 1 p.m., which you can bet on on BetUS. But yeah, the, uh, it's going to be a completely different game for the Dolphins. This season, we've seen some pretty bad quarterback play. Tua was also a part of that, except for that week one. I think he did pretty decent getting the playmakers the ball, and I think that's going to be the main difference here. Tyler Huntley obviously failed to get Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle active. They, they had no place in the game until I think it was the fourth quarter. At the end, they totaled two receptions. Uh, under 20 yards, I believe it was. It's not a believable stat line, but somehow the Dolphins were able to pull that off and hold a wide receiver duo who may have been regarded as the best in the NFL entering this season to abysmal numbers. Tyreek Hill, the number one player in the NFL, held to one reception against the Indianapolis Colts. I don't blame that on Tyreek Hill. I don't blame that on Jalen Waddell. And I also can't put Huntley completely to blame here. I think it comes back to coaching. I think it also goes back to Greer and, and positioning the Miami Dolphins to have a better backup plan for yeah. Tua Tungle Vailo in, in case he goes down. And something that they should have not seen coming, but planned for. And you can't expect Tyler Huntley to get in here, learn the offense, and have these guys humming. I also wouldn't have expected anybody to have uh, to, to have an offense with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and not use them. So not good on anyone's part. And I'm expecting a completely different offense once Tua returns, because if there is one thing that you have to give credit for, and even the Tua haters will say this is, hey, he can dink the ball five yards and they'll take it to the house. I mean, look, I rather you dink the ball five yards and have Tyreek take it to the house and have that one reception deep into the fourth quarter and not have them used at all. I have a quick question for you. Can we finally stop saying that anyone can come into this offense and look as good as Tua has throughout these years? I think is that is that is that something that we can say definitively now? I think definitively, yeah. The, I think you. We have seen a, a, a carousel of quarterbacks come in. It's been Tim Boyle, uh, Skyler Thompson, and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Huntley. Sorry, Tyler Huntley, not Tyler Boyd. We've seen it in recent years too. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, Skylar Thompson that year, when they would come into the game, it's a completely different offense. We can't even get arguably the best wide receiver duel going for anything, right? Now, I do want to attribute that to the, uh, the coach as well. I, I think that is coaching. I think there is a game plan. Look, we saw clearly that Jonu Smith was a part of the game plan, which I love. I think it's easy stuff down the middle, and he makes things happen. He's a playmaker at, as a tight end. Um, but to go into that game and not have that as one of your top things, you know, one of the things you want to get going in that game, maybe get them warmed up for Tua next year, I, I think it's it's criminal. I think it's, it's, it's absurd, you know? Um, I do like that McDaniel in the recent weeks, he's, he's been sticking to the run, and, and he's been doing it Basically, it's been effective, but then there's key moments in the game that I think he he goes away from it for whatever reason. Maybe he thinks he's going to out, outsmart the other team, but at the end of the day, if you don't have the right quarterback to make those plays, don't call them. You know, it's third and one. 
You can get an easy first down with a run. They stuff you. Screw it. Try it again, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, then you go for a field goal, a 50-something yard or a 54-yard or 52-yarder, and you can't even call him more reliable. I mean, this guy Sanders has been an absolute, like, I don't even know. He's just not a, a kicker, an NFL kicker at this point because guys are making these kicks in their sleep, and he just can't do it. And it's been the last, what, two, three years that Sanders has been terrible? Yeah, the NFL is also talking about even slimming down the field goal posts. So. Yeah, because it's money for every... I'm, I'm sick of watching these NFL games, and I'm seeing these kickers. I'm like, I'm watching them do these 56-yarders, 58-yarders, just right down the middle. But every time we got Sanders to kick a, a legitimate field goal, like an easy field goal for any NFL kicker, he just can't do it. So... What is what is this with Greer? Like, why is he so stubborn on his ways with these certain guys that we don't put them in the doghouse, we don't cut them? It's just like, yo, this guy's been with us for five years. He's a great guy. Let's keep him on the team. Like, what is going on there? I, I expect for there to be a change at the end of the season. I don't think it's going to come down to uh, – I don't, I don't think it's going to get as crazy as – letting go of Mike McDaniel or even Tua Tungo Vailoa. Mm -hmm. uh, they both got new contracts, which you were, you know, that's one of your reasons for keeping them on board. I do think uh, that Greer will end up getting the boot there. But going back to Tua and what he's going to provide for this team yeah. going forward, I think that, look, regardless of where you stand on Tua, we can all admit that watching the Dolphins with Tua Tungo Vailoa is a lot, fun, a lot more fun than watching – the Dolphins without him. Yeah. The Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and Mike McDaniel making Tua better than what he actually is debate, I think could now be put to rest. Tua actually affected their game a lot more than we actually thought. Yeah. And you can't just put anybody in this offense and expect for him to flourish. That's also not a real thing. So all of those theories that people had to knock Tua, I think they can all be dismissed at this point. Whether he is going to be a Miami Dolphin next year and going forward, that part's debatable. I don't know. I think the only part that is now in question, and it's not even a question mark, Tua has an issue staying healthy, mm -hmm. okay? And I do think that there are ways for maybe him, for him to, to protect himself and stay away from being injured so much and live to see another down, live to see another play, live to see another game. Yeah. I think that's what Tua needs to work on the most. But we do know at this point that he is a good quarterback. He is effective. And the quarterback's main objective is not to be Superman. We see Josh Allen do it. We see Patrick Mahomes do it. We see Lamar Jackson do it. That is three quarterbacks out of the 32 starters that we have in the NFL. It's unreasonable to expect for every single quarterback in the NFL to be those guys. Those guys are those guys for a reason. And no I think the like main ob the main yeah. objective as a quarterback is to be able to distribute the ball to your playmakers, to your weapons, for them to take it to the house, for them to make those crazy moves. And that's exactly what Tua has been doing since Mike McDaniel has been here, since Tyreek Hill has been here. He gets the playmakers the ball, and they take it to the house. They make moves. They get those first downs. They move the chains. Yeah, the ultimate you know point guard. Right. Steve Nash. Steve Nash wasn't the best offensive player, but he knew how to get the ball to his guys, right? Yeah. Um, which he was a good offensive player. Let's yeah, not he take could that shoot away the three. from him. He yeah, he was pretty good. Um, but yeah, it kind of, you know, when you were talking about that whole thing, uh, did McDaniel make two a better? It kind of reminds me of the Tom Brady, and I'm not, I'm not comparing the two, but the Tom Brady with uh, Bill Belichick uh, right. question, right? And it was like, did Belichick make Tom Brady great, or did Brady make Belichick great? And it ultimately was Tom Brady. I think we can all agree on that, right? Yeah. You know, I'm not, not taking away from Belichick. He's a hell of a coach, possibly the best coach in NFL history. I think I still think it's Shula. Maybe I'm a homer, but still, perfect mm -hmm. season. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think it's undeniable for me, at least. I, I don't think anyone can argue that Tua does not make this team better, that Tua, maybe, maybe McDaniel has handicapped this franchise by only making uh, the strengths of this offense to Tua's skill set. But, I mean, ultimately, th those are the cards that were dealt. We need Tua out there. As long as as McDaniel's our coach, Tua needs to be the quarterback unless he can coach someone else up, maybe a young guy, um, have him sit behind Tua for a year or two. But, you know, if you ask me today, it doesn't mean I'm a 
to a to a stand or 20 or whatever you guys want to call it i think it's all nonsense at the end of the day i support this team i support our quarterback and um i want him here for the foreseeable future unless he gets injured again really soon then i'm like all right look it's time to move on i get it but i want to see him back out there i think he he showed us last year that he could stay healthy by maintaining a uh I guess a healthy approach, like a stable approach, and it's it's just like, all right, I'm going to protect myself before I make stupid plays to get an extra yard or two. You get what I'm saying? Because Tua ultimately could have slid in that Bills game. It was an avoidable injury. It wasn't like, damn, bro, you know, he just got hit, and that's it. Like, Tua, Tua put himself, he exposed himself for no reason, and that's why he went down. So yeah. I think there's, there's ways around this. Yeah, uh, another important note, Tua will not be wearing a guardian cap. Yeah which um, I found interesting. I had a feeling he wasn't going to want to. I, I see Tua as a very prideful individual. And um, look, I, I stand by it. He's got that warrior mentality. His toughness is not in question. Yeah. He's not backing down from a fight. Tua's going to continue playing football. And I'm so excited to see him play because he looks like he has a chip on his shoulder. This last press conference that he had, he seemed like he's, he's out for blood. And he's yeah. done with everybody's BS. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what he could do for us. I hope he can stay healthy. And he's been missed. He's been missed by this offense. I know that, hey, if you're playing fantasy football right now, how much are you suffering when you draft Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, even yeah. Devon Achan? You, if you, dra you, you went into this season saying, hey, there are so many people that we can draft on the Miami Dolphins this season yeah, for handful, fantasy right? football. And if you got Tyreek Hill, if you got Jalen Waddle, you're crying. Yeah. You haven't seen that. Now, those guys, as far as their careers go, they're probably crying too. Even though we didn't see it on the sidelines, we saw them laughing a bit, But um, which I don't know what that's about. Maybe it's... No, but I mean, to to answer that, uh -huh. everyone's talking crap about that. Oh, this team's so unserious. They don't care about winning. That that clip, I remember it clearly. It we was, were winning. We were already winning. It was yeah. 10, 10 to 3 yeah. coming out of the half. So that's why that, that clip was there. They were happy they were winning. They actually had control of the game but i mean it slipped away i mean raheem mostert's fumble ultimately completely got us out of that game i mean that's what led to that touchdown well well, look i, I want to go back to that too raheem mostert and the fumble and everything uh, look mistakes are going to happen in the game and i don't want to put the blame on raheem mostert solely i don't want to put it on alec ingold either for that fumble the two fumbles they, they were terrible mm -hmm. terrible things for us uh Terrible things to happen for the Dolphins. The three turnovers are hard to overcome, though. And those are things that, that are avoidable. This is Okay, definitely. But this is the issue. You cannot go into an NFL game. I know. I, I get what you're going to say. Scoring 10 points, 13 points, even 16 points, and expect to come out with a win. But there's context there, right? Sure, there's context. I'm, I'm saying the context would be Alec Ingold's fumble. We were well on our way to score. That's, that's We were what, at, at, at the 30-yard line or 25? That's, that's fine. That's fine. And I'm and also another thing is uh, look, the play calling and we'll get into it. Jalen Wright is another guy that needs to be more involved. I, I don't understand how he comes off yeah. his the best probably the best running back performance we've had all season. Mm -hmm. Uh the the week before last. And, and even when he was getting the ball in this game, he looked fantastic. And, and he looked great in this game. He was but ripping he doesn't, off big runs, the biggest runs of the game. He doesn't get the ball until what, the fourth quarter? Yeah, no, no. The one I didn't un I didn't understand is that big run that he made. He was instantly benched after that. He didn't come back in the game. It's just weird. I don't know what Mike McDaniel has going on with him. It looks like he's in some kind of a doghouse no, situation. No, I wouldn't say doghouse. I think there's more trust in other players. But ultimately, dude, I love Devon Achan, but Jalen Wright's running a lot better Jaylen than him. Jalen Wright is the best running back on the Miami Dolphins I right now. And I, I don't think it's close. I think that Devon Achan is an amazing talent. And he might be a better overall player. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I could, we could say that. But as far as the better running back goes, someone that's running between in between the tackles, uh, that gets that tough yardage, yeah. I'm giving the ball to Jalen Wright there in that instance. In the beginning of the game, we were running Devon Achan to the ground. This guy just came off a concussion. You're running him in between the tackles. He gets yeah. the ball like seven straight times. I was like, bro, this guy is not going to be alive by halftime. What Luckily, do you think about the Guardian cap and wearing it? I, I, hey, look, you know, the Guardian cap, um, it's an interesting look. When, when the game is playing uh, from afar. It looked like he, a bobblehead. It doesn't look like anything. 
Yeah. When, when they're zoomed in a little bit more, you kind of notice it. It's a little goofy looking, sure. But if, if someone wants to protect themselves a little bit further and they feel like it helps them, I don't knock it. I well, think you, it's, Yeah, you told me something today that I didn't really yeah. know. You, you told me that those things weigh about four and a half to five pounds. Right, yeah. I understand why Tua wouldn't want to wear that. I mean, as a quarterback, your head needs to be on a swivel. Yeah. So, I mean, any added weight, which I would I would argue with, you know, the running back position too. I get it. You're, you're more exposed to those hits. But wouldn't you want to be as light as you possibly can, especially a guy like Devon Achan, that, you know, your your bread and butter is being speed? Well, like the speed guy out there, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, but maybe he figures he has all this speed that he can add on a little bit more I weight guess. and still be so fast. Yeah, maybe, I, it's, I maybe that's, it's a stupid idea for me to, to you know, argue about five pounds. But still, I mean, I, look, maybe it's I, something. Look, I, 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 think, I think exactly just like what Tua said, it's a uh, personal choice. Yeah. And I, I do see for a quarterback, if it does weigh an extra four to five pounds, I do see how that could affect your game. Yeah. Um, it's, it seems like it would be a little bit uncomfortable. So I, I stand with two on it. He shouldn't be putting himself at risk um, as far as the way he plays the game. And I think that's what he's going to come into this to the rest of his career, really, which should be. I think he's going to take a different approach to it. Um, he's going to play a little bit more conscious of, of his head. And, um, you know, hopefully he's... He'll, he'll stay healthy for the rest of the season. He he did seem like he had this fire underneath yeah, him, I and um, I really uh, I, I really liked that interview. A lot of people were kind of knocking it, but um, I think that's the right approach. Yeah, but it, the guy's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, people knock it because it fits their narrative, like we've said. Oh, he's stupid. He's cocky. He's arrogant. He doesn't, he doesn't have the right to be like that because he's the one that's handicapping our team by being hurt. Ultimately, man, these things happen. Uh, players get injured. Like, it's going to happen. Yes, he's more prone to getting these concussions right now, but I think it's something he can avoid. But, I mean, this is going to happen with any quarterback. Quarterbacks get hurt. Deshaun Watson, we saw him on Sunday. He had a ruptured Achilles off of nothing, a non-contact injury. Um, like, it can happen at any, any, any moment. I mean, last year we had a whole year of Tua, but... I'm not. I'm not providing excuses for him, but you know, I, I do want to say something that I find uh, pretty interesting, though. Um, the Dolphins, these last uh, two uh, two seasons, mm -hmm. uh, we had Teddy Bridgewater last year. Was it uh, the year no, before? Year before. Okay, the year before. Last year yeah, was Mike right. Wyatt and Skyler Thompson. You're right, but it's funny. Uh, Tua has this injury history, obviously. But Teddy Bridgewater comes in, immediately gets injured. Skyler, Skyler Thompson. Thompson gets in. He's immediately injured. Teddy Bridgewater comes back in. And then we have that whole, it keeps just teeter-tottering. This season, the same thing. Yeah. Tua goes down. Skyler, Skyler Thompson, Thompson, Thompson immediately game. injured. Then, um, well, Tim Boyle comes in. He's stayed healthy. But Tyler Huntley now comes in. Now gets he's injured. Start. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. Tua definitely has an injury history, an injury concern. But, but it um, happens, man. He's not alone. I know he's the poster boy for injury trouble, but Joe Burrow's right up there with him, believe it or not. But you saw that graphic during the game, right? Did you see that with Anthony Richardson? Yeah. This is, we're talking about a big quarterback, six foot four, 250 pounds, I think, right? I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but it's around that weight. This guy, dude, you saw how hard it was for people to take him down, but that guy's constantly injured too. He's actually missed in his first two seasons more more games than Tua has in his career. Yeah, that's pretty wild. And I also want to go back to um, another thing that we had been talking about when Tua was getting these concussions, you know, defending the idea of him coming yeah. back to return. We were talking about, oh, hey, look, we look at this from a different lens because we're watching because we're watching football right now. But if this was a a uh, a fighting sport, a combat sport, said hockey like too. boxing. Uh, well, hockey's not a combat sport, no, but no, let's know, just but say saying... boxing, UFC, um, and he even mentioned hockey. Yeah. These people get these concussions, and it's not looked at the same way. Tua mentions that and says, hey, we're looking at it a little bit differently because it is football. Mm -hmm. So I do think that there is a little bit more maneuvering in this situation than people were initially uh, looking at, the way that we were initially looking at it. So, yeah, I Obviously, you know, that's not something we're used to seeing on a football field, people being concussed and all that. I mean, it happens, right? But at the rate that it's going right now, at the the way it looks when Tua gets concussed, I mean, it's a little scarier, right? And he, he even said it in the interview. He said that he doesn't want to be known for this, but, you know, here we are. 
Um, there's there's a bunch of reasons why he's upset. I think one of the biggest reasons too is the fact that he felt like he was ready to go, and they put him on injured reserve. So uh, I mean, he's just like we said, he's tired of all the BS. He's tired of all the questions. He's tired of all the people talking nonsense about him. So um, I think we're I, I think you're right. I think we're gonna get an aggressive too. I think we're gonna get a warrior that which is 100 percent what he is, and I think. The beautiful thing about this is that he gets to prove himself against the Cardinals this week, and then he's got the Bills right after. So he can yeah. he can really just shut everyone up. If he if he can get those, and I'm sick of the what ifs, but you know, if he can do what he's gotta do, there's there's a lot, there's a lot riding on it. I don't want to say anything else about it, but you yeah, know, we can he, we can really start turning this narrative around, you know? He's gonna have, have the opportunity to prove himself yeah. against these teams. And it's beautiful. And he knows that. And he, he's going to have that, like, on his fingertips. Like, he's going to be like, dude, I, I got this. I can do this right now. You know what I'm saying? So we might get, and when we get a motivated Tua, dude, that's, he's, he's a badass quarterback. He really is. It's going to be fun to watch. We've been watching some pretty bad football lately, and having Tua back is going to make the offense that much better. We've seen Tyreek Hill with him. We've seen Tyreek Hill without him. Two completely different players. Hey, let's see if we could turn the season around. It may be a little bit too late. But you never know, crazier things have happened. And with the way that the AFC is looking right now, everything is still kind of open. We can have this fairy tale ending now, and you never know. Just stay on, Dolphins Hopeful. We're riding it out with you. And that's going to do it for today. If you guys haven't checked out BetUS, make sure to use code YouTube150 for 150% bonus on your first deposit. The next two will be for 125% bonuses, and that's for up to $2,000 in total. Again, that's YouTube150 for that 150% bonus. But that's going to do it for today, guys. If you haven't already, make sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thumbs up.